Continuing in our answer series, we come to the question, will unconfessed sin, which we forgot about, be brought up again? Now, the actual question that came in was this, will God bring the unconfessed sins we forgot about, brushed off, etc., up when we see him face to face? What an interesting question. Well, in order to talk about that question as an introduction and background, I want to look and show you um, four words. One is the word unconfessed. The next word is the word confess. Then the word confessed, E-D, and the word confession. Now, it's very important for us to understand. When we search through the scripture, we cannot find the word unconfessed as in saying unconfessed sin. It's just not in the Bible. Now, when we come to the word confess, the word confess, it's interesting that seven times out of the 19 times that the word confess is used, only seven times is it used associated with sin. The rest of the 12 times, it's associated with your relationship to the Lord, and your profession of Him as your Savior. Okay, so that's interesting because it tells us that the word confess is not always used in the same uh, topic uh, as we think, because when we think about confessing, we think about confessing our sins. And yet, here, 19 times the word confess is used, seven times it's associated with sin, 12 times, it's not associated with sin. Now, when we come to the word confessed, three times out of the seven times in the Bible that the word confessed is used, only three times is the word confessed associated with sin. The four other times, it's used with four other topics not related to sin. Now, the word confession is interesting because It is only used four times in the scripture. Zero times is the word confession used with the word sin. Four times it's used about worship, the gospel, witnessing, and Jesus. That's where our confession is, is in our worship, in in sharing the gospel, in witnessing, and with Jesus. So you say, Jim, what's the point? Here's the point. The Holy Spirit, who is the inspirer of the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation, always uses words in Scripture with the same meaning every place they are used in the Old and the New Testament. They never have a different meaning or different definition. Now, they may be used in sentences where the topic is different, but the word always means the same. The Holy Spirit is very careful about that. Well, the three words that are found in in the Scripture are to confess, confessed, and confession, and they always mean to acknowledge or admit the knowledge of something bad or good in your life. So confession and to confess just means to acknowledge or to admit something is bad or good in your life. And of course, when we hear the word confess, confessed or confession, we always think about the bad side. But clearly, it is used more in the scripture in those good times than it is in the bad times. When it comes to being used to acknowledge good... Here are the topics of which the word confess, confession, or confessed are used. First of all, in acknowledging good, it's acknowledging the good in your relationship with the Lord and proclaiming that He is your Savior. Second, it's acknowledging good that as believers, we are strangers and exiles here on earth awaiting our heavenly home. Next, it also expresses the great and the awesomeness of God. And then it's talking about how we acknowledge that John the Baptist was not the Christ. 
we are, it also acknowledges that all Jews who reject Jesus will be expelled from the synagogue. It talks to us about acknowledging the good of, of the Lord in worship when we worship Him. It acknowledges giving glory to the Lord or sharing the gospel of the Lord. It acknowledges the good that Jesus is the high priest. Well, that's the good stuff. Now when we have to acknowledge the bad, that's when we're talking about our sin. Do you have a sin? Well, this is interesting. Uh, I have up here a screenshot that is in your lesson of all the Hebrew and the Greek words that are used to describe every, get this, every possible facet of sin. And not even trying to say the Greek or the Hebrew words, let's just kind of see what's talking about. Uh, it's a bad or evil blemish. It's something being a sin or being sinful. It's wicked or criminal. It's bent, it's twisted, it's, it's distorted to, to make crooked. It's a, it's a debt that's, that trespasses or you're indebted to something because you've done something wrong. It's impiety. It's lack of reverence or respect. It's something of a bad nature based on, on wrong or wicked things that we do. It's offending or being guilty. It's, it's trespassing. It's a cause to stray, to, to lead a people astray also. It's to go by the side of or to go past or, or pass over without touching a thing, to overstep it, to neglect, to violate, to transgress. It's to swerve, it's to meander, to reel, to roll, to be intoxicated, to err in drunkenness. It's full of labors, annoyances, hardships, or, or pressed and harassed by laborers uh, against you. It's broken or, or broken into pieces. It's to, to miss, miss the mark, miss the way. That's the one most people, most preachers use today. It's perversity, depravity, it's iniquity. It's rebellion, it's resistance to some authority. It's to err, it's to go astray. It's to break the law or lawlessness. It's to bound or under obligation or subject to liable. It's to miss the mark and to wander away. All those Hebrew and Greek words, uh, the, when you search them down in the scripture, they all deal with sins in every possible facet or angle to a sin that can occur in your life. And of course, all sins are against the Lord. And they also, uh, the majority of them are also against humans that also causes us to sin against the Lord. So I must make the statement here. Most of these Hebrew and Greek words in that chart that I just showed you are translated into our English version, not as a special word, but just simply either to sin, a transgress or transgression, or iniquity. Most all of those words are translated as one of those three words or a variety, like from transgress or transgression, that would be the same word just in a different form. When they are not translated as one of those three forms of words, they are translated into English with some variation of their definition written into the uh, that's written in that word that's above in the chart into the example of what is sin. And so with each word, two parties are always involved. With each of those words, those Hebrew and Greek words, it, it involves one doing a sin and then the one being sinned against. And that can be a person here on earth and that can also be the Lord. It's the one doing the sin and the one that's being sinned against. And so when we hear the word confess or unconfessed sins, we need to realize it involves more than just one person. It always involves two persons because when we sin, we sin against the Lord. And when we sin, we usually sin against someone else besides the Lord. So it's at least two people are always involved. Well, and here's the example. A person sins against the Lord by breaking his law. Thou shalt not lust, thou shalt not covet, that type of stuff. Or a person is sinning against his neighbor by things like stealing, committing adultery, etc. So those are two good examples of, of sins that, that need to be acknowledged that they are sins. Now, do you have a sin that you have not 
acknowledged. Just think down through your life. Do you have a sin that you have done or that you continue to do that you have not acknowledged? And there are actually people in this world who think they have no sin. By the way, they are also people, those are the same people who do not believe in the Lord Jesus as Savior because they don't think they're a sinner and need Him. Well, in case you need a sin to acknowledge, you've come to the right place today. Let's find one for you. Let's find a sin for you. Now, back several years ago, in fact, uh, back uh, around 2009, I took those Hebrew and Greek words and went through the entire Old and New Testament and pulled out the references of where the scriptures of where those sins were mentioned and what the kind of sin and what the sin was, I should say, that occurred when those words were used. And I formed them into a list. Let me show you just a few pages of that list. That list was put in very fine print, double column, and these are things identified as sin in the Bible by God. For instance, killing an unborn baby, participating in the appearance of evil, failing to acknowledge your sins, committing adultery, fearing to trust the Lord, failing to tell people about Jesus, failing to control strife, jealousy, anger, slander, or gossip. There's the scriptures. Fostering anger against your brother, wanting things that you do not have, arguing to others and causing strife, swelling with pride and arrogance, and I can just go down the list there. Okay, you say, okay, boy, that's not really an exhaustive list. Oh, well, wait a minute, here's the next page. Oh, my soul. And here's the next page. And here's the next page. And here's the next page. And then we have the next page. And then we have the next page. And another page. Another page. And then there is a another page. And another page. And another page. And another page. Now, let me just tell you the truth, folks. This is only half the list. I've only shown you half the list. The list is twice as long as this. There are more than 1,000 kinds and facets of sin in different topics. A man who, look here in this last page, a man who will not work, conforming to this world, or forsaking God's calling for this world, friendship with the world, is hated by God, getting entangled with the affairs of life, L living for yourself, living for the world, sorrow with of the world, worldly ambition, worldly minded, being worried, false worship, and the list goes on and on and on. And this is only half of them. This is more than 500 here that I've just showed you on these pages. Well, with just these 500, believe me, I can tell you this. If I were to hand these pages to you, you could go down and you could find one. You're going to find one that says, oh, that's me. That's me. I've got that sin. It's been in my life. I've had it all my life. There's something there. And if it's not there in the other 500, it would be there because God covers all the sins. You have something in your life that you have done that you have failed to acknowledge as your sin. You just have. And some of those things you have forgotten. But what's interesting about that is, as time rolls on, you may remember those things. You may remember those things. Uh, I remember two years ago, I was thinking about back being back at Kilgore College. And a person and myself had an interaction in uh, when we were sitting down in the hallway of the Van Cliburn um, uh, fine arts uh, uh, department there at uh, Kilgore Junior College and we were sitting out in the front foyer and we were eating and there was a back and forth between us and I said something that I remember when I said it but I have forgotten it until really about two years ago and I thought to myself you know as things rolled out my relationship that was very close with that person prior to that interaction 
changed that day when I said what I said. And it wasn't wrong. It was the way I said it that was wrong. And I thought to myself, I want to find that person and I want to apologize. Now, the sad part about that is, is I could not find that person. Could not find it, that person at all in all my searches. And that's kind of strange for me because I usually can find people from all my classes on that because I know enough about their heritage to, to search them down through family and relatives. And as I was preparing this lesson for y'all, a note came through on Facebook that that person had died. And I thought, oh no, they've just died. I was looking for them. God has called them to my mind so I can apologize. And then I realized that the death happened two years ago when that person came to my mind that I had sinned against that person by the way I had said something to them and I had not apologized and my relationship was never the same with that person afterwards. And I'm still fairly close with many of the folks who were there with me in, that, in, in the music school when I was going there at Kilgore. I'm, I'm very close to, to, to some of them, but that person just ended there and it was... Uh, it was uh, uh, not a time that I would have noticed it because we were within two months of finishing the second year. And of course, we're all going to go in different directions at the end of that second year within two months to our new colleges to finish our, our bachelor's degrees. But that relationship went sour and I never confessed to that person or acknowledged that I think I had sinned to them and asked for an apology. So this brings us to the question of this question. To whom must unconfessed sin be acknowledged to so that it will never be brought up again? A second question is, whom must forgotten unconfessed sin be acknowledged to so that it will never be brought up again? Because as I told you, I went for 40 years without thinking about that moment being maybe a sin that was unconfessed before anybody or using the word unconfessed means unacknowledged, not admitted that it was a sin. And so, and it was forgotten for 40 years, but in my mind it came back up and I'm going to tell you, this is how it is, folks. As you think back over your history in life and your, your relationships in primary school and elementary school and junior high and high school and college and even at work, you will sometimes be, a name will come up and you will remember that, that name will cause you to think of a person and that person will cause you to think of an interaction that you had that you might have sinned or been sinned against in that interaction that's brought up. If you've forgotten that sin, who do you need to confess unforgotten sins to? Now, here we are addressing sins really that you committed against others which includes you committing sins against the Lord. Now, James tells us to confess your sins to one another. This verse tells us that when we sin against someone, it is our duty to acknowledge to that person that we sinned against them. We sinned against them. That's what I'm talking about with my friend there from Kilgore that has now gone on to be with the Lord. Love the Lord, in fact. Uh, went into the ministry. I think I sinned against that person. And I should have gone to that person and said, Listen, I think I uh, sinned against you when we were sitting out there in the foyer at that, the Van Cliburn Theater. And um, I just want to say I, I apologize for that. That's very interesting. James does not tell us to ask for forgiveness. You notice, as I just said that, I want to say, I apologize for what I did to you. Uh, I did not and would not have ever asked for their forgiveness. We are not told in our confession to go say, forgive me for this. Forgive me. No, just say, I apologize. I am so sorry. I should not have done that. We should not ask for their forgiveness. And it does not tell us to demand that they forgive. It wasn't too long ago in the pulpit of a church nearby that uh, after a whole debacle where bitter roots had been planted into the church down under the ground of this wonderful, wonderful, fabulous church about five and a half years ago and this group 
of people had nurtured that bitter root and it had grown. And if you know what that passage says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 15, it says this bitter root grows and it defiles many, defiles many. And that bitter root that was sown into that church five to five and a half years ago grew and it defiled many. It hurt, hurt the hearts of many people. Whenever things finally came to an head, uh, just about a year ago, one of the ministers went to the pulpit and said, we made major mistakes and we, we uh, didn't do our homework. But what you have to do, folks, is you have to forgive us for that. That's not the biblical way. We do not demand forgiveness for what we did wrong. We are to admit that we did wrong, and in admitting it, that takes it off of our table because we have acknowledged, because confession simply means to acknowledge what you have done wrong, but not to demand forgiveness, not to ask for forgiveness, but just to admit that you did something wrong to someone and to the Lord. You must simply apologize for sinning against that person and apologize to the Lord for sinning against him. We must include an important point here. Our sins against others are eternally tied to the same sin against the Lord. When we sin against a person, we are sinning against the Lord. All sins against others are sins against the Lord. You can commit a sin against the Lord by failing to follow His instructions, but all of His instructions which cause you to sin against Him involve other humans, by the way. Let's look at the Big Ten. We call them the Ten Commandments. All ten warn you not to sin. In Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 through 8, we find the first four. You are to have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Well, these first four commandments are sins against the Lord. But you have to realize if you take another God to be your idol, that's going to influence somebody else. All four of those, if you do all any of those four, you're going to be an influence on other people who may do the same because you're doing it. You must confess any of these first four sins before Him, before the Lord. His promise to us is that if we acknowledge our sins, He will forgive us of those sins and hear is his promise. Second Chronicles 7:14. And if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Now this is a conditional promise from the Lord. You see the word if? It's a conditional. If you call upon the Lord, humbly pray, seek the face, turn from your wicked ways, God will hear from heaven and he will forgive your sins if you acknowledge your sins. Now the last six commandments are warning us against sinning directly against others first besides the Lord. And here we have them in Exodus chapter 20, 12 through 17. Honor your father and mother that your days may be prolonged. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet. For these six kinds of sins, we must acknowledge or you must acknowledge your sin to the person or persons you sinned. We are not told or promised that the people to whom we apologize will forgive us. They may never forgive us because that may be a sin on them because they need to acknowledge that you have acknowledged that you sinned and you've apologized. But peace, there are often people in this world who will not acknowledge the apology and will not forgive us. We are not to seek forgiveness. We are to confess or admit our sins to those we sinned against. And as promised in 2 Chronicles 7.14 that I just, just read to you, when we confess our sins, the Lord will forgive us. 
but he does not promise that other, per, that other person will forgive us. In addition, John says this, if we confess our sins, there's the if statement again, it's conditional, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, 1 John 1, 9. It's a conditional statement. We must confess or admit that we have sinned. Now let's take everything that we just said and let's turn it around. We are the ones who were sinned against. We're the ones that somebody else sinned against us. Whether the sin is unconfessed or confessed, we are to forgive all sins that are committed against us. Did you hear that? Because if you were sinned against and you have bitterness in your heart, you actually have sinned. But what are we supposed to do with that person who sinned against us? We are to forgive all sins that are committed against us. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 21, the Lord made this point clear to Peter. Then Peter came to and said to the Lord, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive them? Up to seven times? And Jesus turned around and said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. That's a whole bunch of forgiveness. Someone sins against you, ignore it, forget it, forgive it. You do not have to tell them. Don't tell them. We are not told to hold a grudge against anyone who sins against us. We are told to immediately forgive them without addressing the sin. If you hold a grudge and do not forgive those who sin against you, the Lord says this, If you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. Matthew 6, 15. But forgiveness cannot just be lip service. It must be from your heart. After telling a parable about a man who had been forgiven for his sins, he did not forgive another person who sinned against him, but had the sinner punished. And the Lord finished the story by saying, My Heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. Matthew 18, 35. Now, about this, the Lord also said, Whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive your transgressions. You're to forgive them. When you stand, anybody sins against you, forgive. Give them. But what about those forgotten, unconfessed sins that you commit? Moving to address these forgot, forgotten, unconfessed sins that we have committed, we must focus on the word forgotten. Remember Paul says in Romans 3.23, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 not one of us can claim that we have not sinned against the Lord or somebody else. We've all sinned, period. 1 John 1.8 If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Well, I'm wondering at this point if you want me to bring up those ten pages of the list of sins if you want to go through them again because you're going you need to find yours if you think you have not sinned if you're deceiving yourself we have all sinned against the lord and others and sometimes we do not even know that we sinned until later later on when we're thinking about the circumstance it was something we said it's the way we said it it's the way we ignored someone or it's the many other reasons that are out there that we sinned the Lord knew we would do this and he provided a way forgive, to forgive the forgotten and even unknown sins we commit. Once again, we rely on John's word when he says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But remember, Jesus also taught us to pray. And this is what he said. Remember in the Lord's Prayer, there's that phrase where it says, and forgive us our debts. Now that's one, of the, that's one of the Greek words for sin. Our debts means to trespass, where we've done something bad to somebody else. As we also have forgiven our debtors, those who trespassed against us. Jesus tells us that the Lord will forgive us 
of where we trespass others if we forgive those who trespass against us. In Jesus' lesson on how to pray, we find the answer to our forgotten sins. Did you catch it? We find the answer to our forgotten sins. We ask the Lord to forgive those we have sinned against, even those sins we cannot remember and those we never knew about. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Or forgive us our transgressions, our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Whichever way that you want to translate it, it means the exact thing. Jesus has done something for us that was not an Old Testament thing. Jesus has fulfilled the law of how to, how to get forgiveness for unconfessed sin. All you have to do is ask the Lord for forgiveness. If the person's not available, if you, if you don't know where they are, if you can't go admit to them that you may and apologize that you may have sinned, ask the Lord for forgiveness. Forgotten, unconfessed sin committed against you. What are you supposed to do? What about those forgotten, unconfessed confessed sins against you? The Lord gave us that answer too. Right after he taught the apostles how to pray, he said to them, For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Matthew 6, 14. Boy, the Lord is just offering this way to get out from underneath this heap of weight of bricks you've been carrying around because of things and sins that you have done in your life. All you have to do is admit them to the Lord. And especially if it's sins that you have committed because other sins were done to you and you committed a sin back, all you have to do is to ask for the forgiveness and forgive the others who sinned against you and the Heavenly Father will forgive you. So we ask the question that is in this lesson. Will unconfessed sin we forget about be brought up again? If the unconfessed sin is against you and you do not simply forgive the ones who knowingly or unknowingly sinned against you, the Father will not forgive you. Matthew 6.15 If you are holding grudges for sin against you, you are committing a sin. He commanded you to forgive those who sin against you. Not doing so is a sin. Forgive them today. For all those that you cannot remember, confess them today so that you can participate in the words of the psalmist from the Old Testament who said this, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, nor will He keep His anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is the loving kindness toward those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. Psalms 103 verses 8 through 12. So if we confess our sins, we can join in that psalm with the writer. For all those sins that you remember and cannot remember, confess them today so that they will be gone. 1 John 1, 8 through 8-10, I'm going to repeat it again. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So when you remember your sins against someone long years in the past, do you need to apologize? Well, yes, you do. Apologize to the Lord first. And then if you can, find that person and apologize to the person. It is never too late. The Lord will forgive you, but do not expect forgiveness from people. If forgiveness comes, cherish it. You have fulfilled the Lord's instruction. Acknowledging forgotten sins that you don't remember before the Lord, I promise you this, 
will guarantee that He has forgiven you and they will never be brought up again by Him. That's the point of this lesson. There are some of you, all of us, that we have sinned against people and we don't even know it and we've forgotten the ones that we did know. All we have to do to guarantee that they will never come up again is to confess them and admit them to the Lord. If you remember whom you sinned against and apologize to them, you have an extra bonus of correcting your wrong to others here on earth. What a blessing that is. So now let me sum it up here at the end of the lesson. Here's the point of where we are in this room. We've all sinned. We've all sinned against the Lord. And we've all sinned against others. But right now, we can make things right, right now with the Lord. You say, Jim, I'm saved. Why do I have to confess my sins? Because you sinned, and in order for that not to ever be brought up again, you need to admit the sins that you know about and the sins that you don't know about, and it's very easy. All you have to do right now to wipe the slate clean right now and start afresh is to say this, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and that I have sinned against other people and I have sinned against you, my Lord. Some of those sins I remember and some of those sins I have forgotten. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I apologize for them. In your name, amen. If you pray a prayer like that right now, right now, all, no matter how bad you have been in your life, no matter what a reprobate you have been against the Lord in your life, no matter what sins you've indulged in, the Lord has just completed His promise and He'll keep it that He has forgiven you of those sins and you will never face them again. Tonight, before you go to bed, since you've prayed that prayer, when you go to bed, I would say one of the last things you need to say every night is, Lord, if I've sinned today, please forgive me. I apologize. And please help me not to sin again. In your name, amen. Keep the slate clean. Wipe it clean today. Wipe it clean right now. Because I've showed you the promise is if you will admit your sins and that you have sinned, even the ones that you don't even remember, He will forgive you of your sins.